Well, hello everybody. My goodness, this week's gone quickly. I can't believe it's Sunday already. And it's lovely to be talking to you, even though I can't see you. I know that you're there. So, we're going to start a new set of stories for the next few weeks. And it's not going to be about Jesus. It's going to be about someone who lived before Jesus was born. Now, I'm going to give you a few clues, see if you can guess who it is. Okay. This person killed a bear. Got it yet? This person was a king. Any ideas? All right. Killed a bear, was a king, didn't start out as a king. Didn't start out as a king, killed a bear, ended up as a king, wrote lots of songs. Was a king, didn't start out as a king, killed a bear, wrote lots of songs, killed a giant. I think you might have got it by now. So. Didn't start out as a king, became a king, killed a bear, killed a giant, sang lots of songs, and his name starts with D. I think you've probably got it by now. David. So the next few weeks are going to be about David, because David has quite a long story in the Bible. But the funny thing is, if you were to look up your Bible, and you were to look through all the names of the books, David doesn't have a book to himself. Now his story is told in a book that has the name of the person who first saw him and was told by God that David was to be king. And that's Samuel. Samuel saw David when he was a little boy and said, God has told me that he is to be king. And that is what happened. But it didn't just happen like that. David didn't just wake up one morning and say, whoa, look at that, I'm not a shepherd anymore. I'm a king. Oh no. David had to do lots of fighting and he had to hide and he was often very scared, but he always knew that God was with him and he never, ever stopped talking to God and listening to God and thinking about what God would want him to do. He was a marvellous king when he became king. And our story this time starts when he was king and all that fighting was behind him. He was so delighted because now there was a time of peace and he wanted all the people to know about God and about how he felt about God and how grateful he was that there was peace. Now you might remember me talking about when Joshua was going to the city of Jericho. Do you remember there was a special box, a very special box that had something very special inside it? Well, I'm going to show you a few boxes. Here we are. This is a pretty special box. It's a really nice box and it had a wonderful present in it when I first got it. But it's empty now. It doesn't have anything in it. This is a pretty fancy box. This box came all the way from Japan and inside it had some very fancy, I don't know if you can see them, fancy cake things made handmade by this guy. But it's empty now too. But this box, oh, look at this box. This box is gold. In fact, it's so shiny you can hardly see it. It's a very special box. It's got something inside it. Now, inside it is another box. And inside this box, there's something very precious. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a very special necklace that looks like a flower. And there are matching earrings to go with it. Now, they're very precious because obviously they, they're jewellery and they're made of silver. And they're, they're quite good earrings, but they're very special to me because I wore them when Lisa, my daughter, got married. So they mean a huge amount to me. So I keep them very carefully in a box so that they don't get damaged. Now the box we are talking about was called the Ark of the Covenant. And that box had something unbelievably special in it. It had the tablets that were written on when Moses went up to talk to God and got the Ten Commandments. You might remember me telling you about that. And so the box was very, very precious. Now it had been out of the city when David was fighting, but 
but now there was peace and David wanted to bring it back into the city. So he was going to have trumpets and dancing and excitement. Now you might think that David, the day the Ark of the Covenant was going to come back into the city, I bet you would think you'd put on your best clothes, your shiniest clothes, your best crown, look fantastic. But you know, that's not what David did. David actually put on just a perfectly ordinary top. That's about as ordinary as you can get. There's not even a picture on that. And the reason he did that was because he wanted people not to look at him, not to think of him as the king, but to think of the fact that they were bringing this precious thing that showed that God was king over everything. That's what David wanted them to remember from the day they saw the ark being brought into the city. But because he was so joyful and so happy, the other thing that David did, now I know that you know who the queen is, but I don't think you've ever seen the queen actually dancing, have you? But that's what David did. David danced. He danced and he sang and he praised God all the way through the city as the ark was being cut, carried through the city so that people would know that he was praising God, loving God and happy about God. Because, do you know, sometimes we forget that what God wants us to be is happy. So David showed all the people in his city that they could be happy knowing that God was with them. And I mean properly happy. And they could praise God because everything belongs to God and he shares it with us. That's what David wanted everybody to take away with them. And I think I used the word share. I did. And you know, David wanted to share too. So it says in the Bible that on that day, David shared out bread and meat and raisins. And I've got some raisins here. And I'm hoping that maybe some of you have got some raisins as well. And so we can share some of the raisins and think about how David wanted to share the great news of God wanting us all to be happy and praising God and singing Alleluia because he knew God was with him. Let's have a wee prayer about that, shall we? Close your eyes. Heavenly Father, Alleluia, we praise you. Everything you do is marvellous. And God, we want to thank you that you want us to be happy. So we praise you for all your wonders, but we praise you because you love us and you want us to be happy. Thank you for being our friend and for loving us all the days of our lives. Amen. Now, Tamara has been great she is playing for us one of the songs that I hope you remember and it's one of the ones that you have to do actions for and it's Allelu, 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 Alleluia, we'll praise the Lord. Now do you remember you can't just stay sat down for this you have to get up, some of you have to get up, so you have to stand up when you sing Allelu, Allelu, Alleluia and you have to sit down when you sing we'll praise the Lord. So when Tamara plays it you see if you can jump up when it's Allelu, Allelu, Alleluia, and sit down when it's We'll Praise the Lord. I hope you do it. Maybe if you do it really well, you could send in your video of you doing jumping up and down, ready for next week. Who knows? Anyway, it won't be long before I see you again. Maybe not see you really, but I'll know you're there. Bye. <laughs>